Hey guys, I found this uh, Steven Anderson clip online yesterday. I was just browsing around and I saw this clip. So I clicked on it and I noticed one thing that Steven said that is very dangerous. And I want to go ahead and play the clip and then speak after it. So well, quick report to you on the soul winning mega marathon. What a huge success. We had soul winning marathons in all 50 states. Many states had several different locations, over 2,300 soul winners and 3,042 salvations. Okay, I'm going to stop it right there. So he claims that there were over 3,000 salvations. So he makes the bold statement that 3,000 people were saved. One of the most dangerous things a pastor can do is proclaim someone saved because of some church event or some perceived revival that may have happened over the course of one day. Now, the reason why this is dangerous, and Paul Washer talks about this a lot, is because you're typically speaking, the pastor's typically ministering the gospel to people who are, for the most part, lost, for the most part, who don't uh, study the word of God, who are not true Christians. They may attend church, but they don't know what it truly is to be saved. And when a pastor comes along and he justifies the professing the their the profession of faith by declaring that they're saved because of one event because they may have answered an altar call or made some profession at that service the reason why that's dangerous is because that person will cling to that that day that event for the rest of their lives thinking that they truly are of Christ that they truly have been born again in a lot of ways, that's just as dangerous as telling people you may be evangelizing to on the street that Jesus loves you. And just to give you an example of why it's dangerous with the whole Jesus telling people Jesus loves you. Let me give you an example. If I'm if I'm seeking to evangelize the gospel to lost people and I go to, let's say, uh, my local grocery store where people are coming in and out and I pull someone to the side. And I tell them, before even explaining to them the gospel, I tell them, do you know Jesus loves you and has a wonderful plan for your life? Okay, now this person might be a professing Christian. They might attend church now and then, or they might not. The person answers the question and says, yeah, yeah, I, I believe that. I believe that Jesus loves me. After I tell them that Jesus loves them, I go into the, explaining the gospel and ministering the word of God to them. And how they can be saved. Now what we need to understand is a person is going to only remember a couple bits and pieces of the conversation. When everything's over with, they're going to walk away remembering just a couple bits and pieces. And the most important thing they're going to remember is that Jesus loves them. Now they'll, re they'll, they'll be thinking about what I talked to them about. About repentance, about turning from their sin, about putting their faith in Christ and being born again, what it means to be regenerate. Yeah, I remember him talking about some repentance and some other stuff, but but Jesus loves me and they're going to cling to that. They're going to cling to that. See, the reason you don't have to tell people Jesus loves you is because they already believe that if they don't believe anything else. John 3, 16 is going to always ring true to them. God is love. OK, and God is love. But we must understand that in a biblical context. When you declare that 3,000 people got saved, you're essentially lying. You don't know these people. You don't know their lives. You don't know what the profession bear, bore in their lives after that service. You don't know if it's changed them. You don't know if they're continuing on in the faith. You don't know if they have a new relationship with God. What, because they made some profession? Because they accepted an altar call? Or because they... You, that's dangerous okay it's not for you to 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 claim who or who or how many were saved okay you don't know these people you don't know their lives so I think because because the role of pastor is the most important role a man can have I, I believe that that is the most important job in the world 
because it preaches it's the it's a job it's a role that brings forth the the only message that's going to last pastors have to be careful when they say things like this okay and they need to understand how it will lead people down a path that's very dangerous so I just wanted to talk on that I just wanted to point that out because he's not the only pastor I've seen do that I mean you've got a lot of prosperity pastors um, in North Korea I mean, South Korea very large churches that will say things like uh, we had 5,000 people come out and 5,000 people left saved and it's like what are you talking about you don't you don't know you don't know who are you to declare this it's, this is not like Paul Washer says people are not numbers okay this isn't a numbers game how many people we can push out every year as though you know we, we mark it on some chart that brings our, our church some type of uh, you know uh, I don't know it's just frustrating so thank you for listening I hope I got my, my message across and uh, God bless <laughs>